Merry Christmas, y'all. Merry Christmas, Eve. Merry Christmas, Eve. Eve, Mr. Jamie, Mr. Doc, the Honorable Casey Ashmore. What's up, gents? How y'all doing? Man. Happy early Christmas. Well, Very first good. Off, you guys freaking sound like you had too much eggnog and you need to wake the hell up. <laughs> yeah, I did. Mean, break I'm, over here. I'm still drinking my coffee. God, oh, wake up, Casey. Man, I'm telling you, we had we had to uh, we had uh, we had church outside, and I'm thawing out, man. I'm thawing oh. out. It was a little brisk. The coast, th the coasty is thawing out. Well, anyways, we are live. Today for ten thousand dollar Thursday, we're all ten thousand dollar Thursday coming to you to you from our humble abodes here and throw on my Santa hat. Boom! Yeah, there you go. That's what's up. So uh, we just want to come to you guys tonight with just complete gratitude, complete sincerity from the bottom of our hearts, and just say thank you to everybody that's been involved with this crazy journey of ours this year, and uh, more especially to my boys over here, Casey and Doc, for leading the way. And charging through tonight, we have our special guest, Mr. Jamie Benetto. He's a former United States Marine and an insurance specialist. So, Casey, why don't you tell us a little bit about Jamie, and then we'll give him the floor for a little bit. Ooh, Rod, Devil Dog. Hey, uh -huh. Jamie. Jamie, thanks for being here, man. Oh, thank uh, you. So, so, so Jamie's a guy who he's he's not just a Marine, but he's a, a peace officer, former peace officer too. You know, we got we got some uh, former first responders in the RVBA, Ben Northcutt, and a lot of, you know, a lot of people who have made that sacrifice, you know, and then they transition into business. And I don't know exactly if that's how he found us, but we're really glad he found us. And, you know, so there's a lot to, to what Jamie has done for not only our nation, for us all, but also the North Texas area, you know, serving as a you know, a, a first responder, and we appreciate you, man. We do, and we know that that is a usually a thankless uh, and not very rewarding financially job. I mean, there's a lot of paychecks to the to the heart, but you know, I mean, I've seen a, um, I've I've seen what the the what is it TMRS that does y'all that does first responders uh, uh, retirement package, man, and it's it's you know you're like, man, how do you you know, you, you do that your whole career and it's, it's really not a lot. And, you know, the, it's, you, anyhow, you know, um, that being said, that being said, Jamie and I were brainstorming about what to do at Christmas time. You know, it is a time for giving, right? We, we were all given a gift uh, a couple thousand years ago. Uh, the light came into the world. You might've heard, of this little guy, his name was baby Jesus. And we celebrate his birth tonight. And the thing about, you know, this organization and this Patriot and, and veteran organization is that it is all about serving. It is all about serve service first, right? Right. The rewards come after the service and so Jamie and I were brainstorming about how, what could we do? What, what could we do that could serve others right now? And we started talking about work and started talking about, you know, things that, that happen. And I will tell you that more times than not right now, I've got four active lawsuits, four active lawsuits where somebody has the wrong kind of insurance. Wow. Somebody's not got the right product. There's, right. It, they got they paid for a product. Right. They paid for Skinner Class A insurance. Right. You don't want but that. Then, when the <laughs> chips are down. Right. The chips. Are, let me see that damn declarations page. Give me that deck page. I need to know what coverage limits you got. Well, then they call they call their insurance producer. And then let's call that guy Mike Slick Rannigan. Right. And Mike's like, dude, I put you on the right product. Then I cashed all your checks. It's great, y'all. I love you. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's some there's some committee up in where are all those insurance uh, headquartered at? They still in Des Moines, Kansas. Iowa, or whatever. Kansas. Kansas, right? Right. So <laughs> they call them. They call that. So Mike Rannigan is trying to get you on the right product, but somebody in Kansas is like, oh, whoa, whoa, dog. <laughs> 
you got to call Casey because we got this. We got this exclusion here. <laughs> you, in mm-hmm. fact, have no coverage, and you've just unasked a bunch of money. So, and I'm not saying that happens in every case, but it happens enough. It happens, and so here's something that like red flagged for me. A couple years ago, a couple years ago, y'all remember the data breach at Target, where like Target got hacked and they got all the credit cards. Right, they got everybody's nope. credit card, and not only did the Russian bad guys get everybody's, oh, they got cards, me, yep. they got me, yeah, they got me, they got uh, they got my Twitter account, they got my Yahoo account, they got all kinds of stuff. Uh, that was like a, a massive nationwide attack, cyber attack, and and it's they're just getting more sophisticated. So I kind of learned a lesson. I was like, whoa, I don't want to, I don't want to have a problem. Like you know, how many people uh, do business with credit cards? everybody in the rvba right you're either carrying a credit card or accepting a credit card right and, so, and you're so, you're slamming it down especially during the vid right because nobody wants to touch no money because the money might have the COVID on it right that's because they're out of coins <laughs> money <laughs> hey, so, so 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 anyway there's exclusions in your in your uh in your policies that you need to be aware you need to make sure that there's exclusions that gobble up the entire purpose of having the policy. So the, the thought there is, you know, Jamie's running a gift, a special. He's going to do an insurance audit. Hey, Matt, let's say hi. Merry Christmas, y'all. What's up, little Matt, Matt? Hi. Show us, show us the knife hand. <laughs> there it is. It's, um... <laughs> so, Jamie, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, the offer that you're putting up to our alliance? Well, I'll just make it quick. My 21, uh, 21 years in the Marine Corps, retired as a master sergeant, and I did 12 years law enforcement uh, here in Texas. Um, and now I'm on the insurance side. Um, one of the main reasons I want insurance is because I'm getting older and I still like the concept of being able to protect people. Um, and I, I can appreciate how insurance can protect people, not necessarily um, lose them money. It should be able to save them money and help them out. Um, so I kind of figured I would try uh, – that route and it's been helpful so far so i'm able to save a lot of people money and get that insurance coverage and protection they need um and i found it a, a quick passion to doing this so um i'm gonna run with it and gonna hit it hard so so the insurance that you cover why don't you tell us what what uh policies you cover uh, everything uh personal home and auto uh and then we do uh, uh, commercial general liability we do group health i do um workman's comp uh property coverage everything so in our in our office we do everything you need for one business so so um, for for small businesses then you know being a small business with you know we don't have that many people do you cover small businesses because you know as you get better rates with you know large corporate america but you cover small business insurance we we do cover everything um every type of business out there and one of the things i'm focusing on is like better known businesses and typically right. what i've found is generally they're not huge businesses either they are smaller businesses mm-hmm. um except for docs obviously he's huge uh but any any business uh <laughs> any business out there but the better known ones are the ones i like getting because it's when they're they're just starting out um they're not they're not real familiar with all the different taxing uh costs that, that go along with that business um and they're fine they find out the hard way that if they're not paying attention to their insurance programs and policies um they're getting hit hard at the end of the year for audits and stuff um so what i want to do is if you have a, a I don't need to be your agent or anything. Just send me your policy and I'll look over it. And keywords that you're looking for, even if you don't want to send it to me, is what rates you got as far as per one per uh, payroll per thousand or per subcontractor cost. Um, and a lot of you, it's probably you know foreign language for a lot of you because you don't even pay attention to that stuff. Um, and that's where the money adds up at the end of the year because you know you just you just get this five six thousand dollar annual premium. You're like, oh, that's yeah. great great premium. Well, you do an audit at the end of the year, now you're owing seventeen eighteen thousand dollars. I can. T- I can tell you um, how to prevent that from happening or at least prepare for it if it's going to happen. Are you okay if I throw up your uh, email address and phone number on the ticker that's rolling oh, down here? Definitely. Yep. Hey, I'm going to I'm gonna speak on some things real quick because uh, Jamie kind of, when I first met him, he was telling me that he was getting into this game, uh, the insurance. And so I had him take a look at my policies. Um, so as some of you guys may know, I, we have a couple of companies that we play around with. And one of the companies, the insurance policy never gets audited, never gets looked at. It's in the medical industry. Um, 
I can I can probably go my whole time and probably never even have insurance on that particular business. But then I have this roofing and construction business, right? And I didn't know that at the beginning of the year you show a profit and loss statement, and at the end of the year you show a profit and loss statement. And like you were saying, um, your premium's five grand at the beginning, and then it's twenty thousand dollars at the end. But the insurance agent should have helped me along the way through those quarters doing mock audits with that small business and saying, Hey man, where are we at on your profit and loss? Are you making more money than you anticipated? If you are start allocating X amount of dollars towards your insurance premium. Yep. Um, so little did I know the construction industry is probably the most odd. And you correct me if I'm wrong, Jamie It's yep. one of the most audited industries out there. So handyman plumbers, electric right and we can get lost in the sauce as small business owners not knowing those details and i think that's where jamie really begins to shine at is helping us helping the small business owners become more educated with with just the the, the bullshit that you can get hit with like and like you said the payroll per a thousand tell me tell us a little bit more about that what does that mean so th just for example i'll pick company x um so you have a uh, revenue starting out the beginning of the year your revenue is estimated or your last year let's go off of uh um, $150,000 a year. Well, your premium is based off of that. Plus your risk, your categories like welders are higher risk, roofers are higher risk. So what they'll do is they'll do a premium based off of what you expect to make. And if you make more than that, then it's it can be up to $150 per $1,000 of payroll. God, dumb. Okay, Ooh. which is huge. I mean, that's a big money. That's a big number. Um, or if, if you get on a program that's based off of subcontractors, um, which I got company X, it's about an $8.50 rate per $1,000 worth of pay to a subcontractor. So that company can double their work and pay and subcontractors pay. And the max are going to go up is four and a half thousand dollars a year. Vice going up $16,000 a year. If their rate is based off of $150 per 1000 of, of revenue. So if I understand you correctly, Jamie, that it's more advantageous for a small business owner to maintain a 1099 base and maybe have one or two salary employees to ensure that your payroll stays consistent throughout the year and act uh, and then you pay a lower cost or you re reduce the risk by using 1099 subcontractors. Yes. And then, but you got to be careful of that too, because just because they're 1099, it's what the job that they're doing. If it's a, it's, if, if it's a ad, uh, admin or a clerical, then there's no worries about it because it's not your main highest risk is what you're worried about if you do a 1099 and you put them up, up on your job you put up on top of a roof they become a roofer whether they're 1099 or not they're a roofer now and that high yeah. risk is what's they're doing that job so it's gonna the rate's gonna go off of that person but now, why wouldn't the independent worker be held responsible for his own insurance why am i held liable anytime a 1099 is hired and they don't have their own insurance they become your employee Wow. They are your responsibility. That's why every time you do an application for an insurance, they ask you, do you, requ do you show, require your subcontractors to show proof of insurance? So would it be helpful for any subcontractor that any of us come out with, say, hey, I need proof of COI, certificate That's of insurance it. prior for you ever. And would that, that, that would go for Jeff if he said, hey, man, I just need your help one day on this dude's house, right? Yes. And he decides to bring him in. Black level automatically assumes responsibility for that person. Yes. If they're 1099 and don't have insurance, they become an employee. It's just like you hired them because they're doing work for you and you're paying them. But if they have their own insurance, then their insurance will cover their, their issues or their concerns first. Now, if it's a large enough lawsuit and Jeff is partly responsible as a business owner because of something that was done wrong or policies were violated, right. that subcontractor is going to his insurance is going to cover up to whatever maxed out it covers and then jeff may had to may have to reach into his coverage a little bit to cover the the excess okay so so what, I'm, what i'm hearing about all this is jamie is an asset within our alliance for all of us small businesses because i'll be honest with you man this kind of shit goes straight over my head that's why we lean on jamie so he can explain this and i like to call it barney style that's a marine corps term Right, break it down Barney style for me because I'm pretty, but I ain't I ain't that smartest guy in the room. You know what I mean? So I love uh, self confidence too. And I want to add too, Jeff. I mean, you sent your policy, so I could look at it, and I sent I sent it back within 20 minutes saying I can't beat this premium. 
Yeah, and, that's how I'm going to be. I'm not going to try to mess with you and waste your time if I can't do something better for you. Yeah, and and and, and that kind of stuff is, is paramount. So you know, when I when I sent my policy to you, I was open game for any changes that you came back with or whatever you recommended, and you were honest enough and upfront enough to say, "Hey, look, man, your policy is good to go." I I am now a fan and a follower and an advocate of your business because of that honesty. And we preach that here, you know, integrity is first. So, you know, if you find somebody that, look guys, if you watch the video, you get it later, whatever it is, the, the man is handing out services for free tonight for the people that are members of our alliance. By all means, get the email and the phone numbers here. Just send them your policy, let them look it over. You may be wasting a lot of money because you don't hey, know. Man, I did, and he saved me a, a drip of money. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, and, that, and then he helped explain those risks and, the, and those differences between a payroll person and, and a 1099 person, right? So that, that information alone was gold for me because I now really had a better understanding. So basically, he had also suggested that my company become a writer on the subcontractor's policy and vice versa. Yep. And that really helps to reduce your premium costs, right? And then, yes. And then there's also a simple letter of where you're, it's a no harmless letter. So both of you sign it saying, if I screw up, I'm not suing you. If you screw up, you're not suing me. And it's just, it's just a single sheet of paper. It's a legal document that you guys sign. It's like a contract and you, each person takes care of their own thing. And you're guaranteed that he's, that, that subcontractor or that team of subcontractors is not going to go after you and you're not going to go after them. Yeah. And, uh, I think one thing, man, when I, when I started my business, I knew that insurance was paramount for me, you know, being in anyone's home. I don't call my jobs job sites. I call them home sites because they're homes that we're in, you know what I mean? Whether they're a new construction or all the way to finished install. And I knew that was the first order of business for me was to reach out and obtain an insurance policy. If you are running around running a business without insurance, you are a fool. I will just say it flat out. You are leaving yourself yeah. open for it's all kinds of shit like what just explain that to us jamie a small business is running around doing a great job shit happens we know it happens and they don't have insurance how does that affect them well how much money you got to pay in a lawsuit because the basic standard lawsuit is going to be a million dollars good unless you got a million dollars to lay around there's no lawyer going to ask kc he's not going to sue anybody for less than less than a million i mean that's just a standard if i'm going to get it's probably worth the time right it's not worth time and energy yep if we're so, gonna, right. so, something huge for small businesses that they may not think about is that they're getting they're going on these the, the, you know doing a construction doing plumbing at these houses that's one thing but as soon as they step across that median and i'm doc i'm sure you can tell you said jeff as well when you cross that line from residential to commercial totally okay it's huge because those commercial like walgreens or K, uh, walmart or any of those places they're going to say we want to see your proof of insurance you yeah. that you have your own job oh, liability so you're losing you're losing business because now you can't you can't cross into the commercial realm and make real money because you don't have insurance. And I, I got one example. I'm dealing with a company right now. It's a roofing company, and they've been working for a couple of years now with no insurance. What the? F That's not me. Uh, no, it's not. Yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they, they just didn't are, are ignorant to it and just didn't know. So here's the thing: they just got an opportunity for a huge company, and they're going to contract them, but. That company is, like I just said, they're requiring workman's comp and general liability. They're getting ready, if they want this company to, to work for this company, they're just getting ready to drop about 21 grand a year per insurance between workman's comp and general liability. That's something you don't budget for. Yeah, but so, you got to have that, man, because yes. I, I, I've worked with builders that have asked for it. So, you know, I mean, I've been in positions where certain projects, especially government contracts, things like that. But you go to a house, you don't need it. No, no resident real. I mean, unless you're roofing, but like Jeff, you go to a house, they're not going to say, Hey, do you have proof of insurance? You know what I mean? It's not really a huge, a, a huge aspect, if you will. But you're climbing on somebody's yeah. roof, you kind of want to make sure they got insurance. Yeah, but it doesn't matter to me because I do it to cover my sticks. Well, so you, you say, you say something very important, uh, Jamie, and this is what can really separate your business apart from, from those, from those competitions, right? Yeah. When I introduce the, a company, right to and pitch them for services or you're right to become a vendor i in my packet i include my coi yeah. right and by doing so i already increase my credibility uh during the sales game so it's a, time, it's a time thing there's there's thousands and hundreds of thousands of roofers out there so if a contractor or a commercial company comes to you and you don't have your stuff in line for insurance they're gonna go to the next guy 
Correct. And if you, I mean, yeah. so if you don't have insurance right now, you're going to need to get it if you want to compete. The but if you don't have insurance in general, you need to get it because everybody needs to cover their six. Things happen. People slip and fall through, you know, ceilings or, you know, you run a drywall saw through a, a plastic plumbing line. Like you need to, you need to be covered. You need to make sure, you know, as a good business owner, it should be standard operating procedure to have insurance for your business. And doc, you said like the ones that you don't get audited on, it's probably, it's, it's called a BOP. It's a, it's a business owner's policy and it's hardly ever audited. It's just a standard, just a basic owner's business owner's policy. So why can't I have that on, on construction? Because the risk outweighs the, right? Exactly. The risk. And it's, it's, too many excess, it's an excess market. Too many it's, claims. Is that what happened? What's too, that? Many, too many dumbasses made too many claims. And well, it's not just that, but if you, if you imagine it's, it's one thing, if someone walked, you know, they slip and fall and they hit their knee in, on the floor, that's a risk. If someone falls in your line of work, you're looking at broken, you know, bad broken limbs or possible death or paralyzation. So it's more, it's more of a concern for carriers to monitor your business as a roofer. That makes is total sense. Death. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Say I was just a 1099 kind of guy and I was just a day laborer. Is there a policy out there for those type of people? Yeah. Right. So I'm just a regular old guy. I'm a salesman, whatever, and I just want to be protected. What does that run somebody like that? And I, I, mean, I, can't, I, I, I can't give her just a single a number. It depends on what they do, um, what kind of handy, money handy they're making. We'll say a handyman, jack of all trades. Just come in, button up shop, and uh, we make about a hundred. We make about 120k a year. Um, I, I still, I, there's so much to consider in math. I mean, I, I'll put it together and try to come up come up with something, but. It all depends on how much work they're doing, who all they're working for, and what work it is they're doing. Handyman's one. Okay, I so I come in. Too many variables. And I, and I fix your fuse box. It. I fix your fuse box. That's an electrician. That's a handy guy, but that's a higher risk than if I come in and I tighten the sinks on, you know, pipes on sure. your sink. Um, well, if you if you're look if you're listening to this or watching this later on, if you have any questions, like what what am I considered? I'm a handyman. I'm a roofer. I'm a do it all. You know, some roofing companies do you know, shrubs and fences and whatever. But the, what I'm, the point I'm trying to make here is get with Jamie, talk to him and yeah. let him know what you do, what your risk variables are and how you run your business. And then he can give you accurate numbers because yeah. it, that's, I understand where you're coming from. People ask me all the time, well, what's that cost? And it's like, well, let me, let me throw my finger in there. I'm like, like it, I need it, to design so your much, system. You need like to design it's system. like a, a driver, uh, car insurance. I mean, without knowing your history, I can't give you, I mean, you can two have the same driver history, the same type of car, same age, and it'd be about the same premium. But one of you has, you know, two tickets. Well, that premium just jumped up. So, I mean, there's so yeah. much involved in the, in the numbers and different carriers have different policies. Um, and that's what I do. I'm not, I'm not insurance. Okay. Uh, I'm not the, I'm not the insurance company. I'm, I'm that, that link of that agent, that broker between you and the right carrier. My Perfect. job is to go out to these multiple carriers and find the most competitive price and coverage for you. So, and that, that's good that you brought that up because that, that you, you put yourself in a different role there. So, you know, you, you had, when I first met you, you're like, no one wants to talk to the insurance guy. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we, don't, have we don't have to have, have a shiny product. We don't have, have a shiny little thing to show you and say, hey, come buy my yeah. product. I, I, I think you, you have a lot more value than you think because you also have stories like Casey shares with us a, a lot of the times where it's like, okay, you got the squared away guys over here, no matter what industry they're in. And then you got the four cases that you're dealing with over here that had the most jacked up situation. Casey, without obviously sharing any critical information, give the scenario maybe. We don't need to know names yeah. and times and places. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, sometimes it's, it's simply just that they were in a hurry. You know, you're in a hurry. Right. You're expanding into a new to a new market and that that new market requires a different different type of insurance product. You call your you call your insurance contact, whoever that is, and they just put you on the wrong product. You know, mistakes happen just so just like that. Just, just like that. Example. It's human uh, error. And that's uh, where we, <clears throat> I, I really think it's critical. You know, if your insurance agent is progressive hey man they got great insurance and we buy some of it but you need to know who you're working with right you know it's kind of you know shop local there's a lot of truth to that right you know bank local 
you know, these people are going to take a vested interest in making sure that Doc's, re Doc's Roofing has all the coverage it needs, not on the wrong product, because what can happen is, okay, you got, you think you've got, you have paid for what you think is the right product. A year or two goes by, a claim gets made, and then, you know, you call up somebody like Jamie and they're like, oh, yeah, I got you, dog. I'm going to get that claim rolling right now. And then they send it off to the claims department in Nebraska or Kansas or wherever they are, Austin. And, you know, some committee sits down and goes, well, let's go through this policy and find out where the exclusions are so we can deny the claim. Yeah. yeah. So, so I got I got an example. If I can throw it real quick. We have a record service. Uh, not we, but there's an example I know of. There's a record service that has a premium that was like $30,000 a year. Okay. They do a lot of, a lot of towing. Well, they got put under a category of a dealership record. Well, there's not, there's barely any risk when all you're doing is, is transporting vehicles from one dealership to another. These are brand new vehicles. They're not up on the road. They're just going around the street type deal. And then what this record service does is they're a regular call to service record. They're out there on the road 24 seven, um, high risk driving all night long. And they, there was a fatality accident. Well, they're not covered because the category that they're under and their agent didn't correct it is based off they were on a dealership record service only so when they're at two o'clock in the morning driving to go to pick up a broken down vehicle on the side of the road and there's an accident and they cause a death their carrier is not going to cover it because it's not a deal it was not a dealership service so let me ask you something jamie i would assume that ownership of that situation lies on both parties it does because it does. that that tow truck owner um definitely knew he wasn't a, a doggone dealer <laughs> exactly but right at the end of the day that that tow truck owner wanted to save money on his yes. premium and that's it the, the agent right? wanted to sell the, the that agent didn't care about it either they just wanted to sell that thirty thousand dollar premium that's right when, and we get the commission yep and when we well when we tried to quote that same company it was going to cost us like eighty five thousand a year for him it was going to cost sure. him eighty five thousand a premium and he's like no nah, i don't want to do that that's too much money well, that agent that did sell from a different company should have explained that to him. If I showed you a category code of 5488, you have no idea what that means. Well, and I wish you wouldn't do that to us because we weren't ready. Well, we don't, we what? don't know what it means either. I mean, it, it's, we have to go to the carrier and say, hey, what is this 54888 code? Well, that's a dealership service, record service only. Well, this ain't going to work because our, our record service does all calls of service. Sure. 24 7. Yeah. And, and, and that's why, I mean, the, the agent, I mean, there is some ownership responsibility for the company, but I mean, especially when you see two policies, one's 30 and one's 90, you should kind of understand that, hey, why is this one much more? And why is this one much less? Um, but that's what the agent comes in and says, if you're doing full service record service, you should probably pay this higher premium because it's not going to cover you if you're doing something different. Let me ask you a question, Jamie. Is the insurance industry stressful? It is because... Like I, said, I have to keep saying I'm not the insurance company and I, I got to pay yeah. insurance like anybody else does. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's frustrating when I'm trying to save money for someone and we don't have a whole lot of say on how much the premium is going to be. Yeah. You know, it, we have to depend on what the carrier says and their standard markets all across the United States for what insurance policies are going to be. So it gets frustrating with us when we're trying to save you money and the carrier's like, well, no, there's one ticket on this guy's license. Yeah. So it's going up like, let me, you know, it's, it's just, well, you're, just you're just brokering the best deal you possibly can. I was just asking because I noticed all those empty bottles behind you in that case. <laughs> <laughs> those aren't empty. Those, those, hey, are, so, those are Marine Corps glasses from all the Marine Corps balls. Get oh, some. Nice. <laughs> hey, so here, uh, as a business owner, I'm going to tell you my dislikes about insurance. Okay. Because you guys do get a bad rep. And uh, you, you've talked to me. I, I was pretty forward with my. Uh, thoughts on insurance companies, right? So I'm a business owner and I pay the $20,000 a year. And I do that year after year after year after year after year. 10 years, let's say, not one claim. Mm -hmm. How come we can't get a kickback, a benefit, a thank you, a or whatever, right? So how come, you know what I mean? Where where does the, because yeah. that's the uh, such a disdain, right, that I have for insurance is I do my part and I pay my part, but I don't get rewarded for my part. But boy, let me get that speeding ticket, and I'm going to be fucking through yep. the doggone roof. 
So yeah. Part, why do part, I want insurance if I've made it ten years with never making a with never making a freaking uh, problem? Okay, so, so I can save enough money to re- insure myself. So let me explain this. Uh, part of the part of the thing is you can't show or prove that negative. I just told you about another roofing company that's been in for three years. Sure. Their first policy is costing them twenty one thousand. Sure. You're seven, year? eight years in, right? What's that? You're seven or eight years in your business now. Is it how eight years? Se- yeah, seven years. Okay, and your policy—I'm not going to say the numbers, but compared to that first policy, is twenty-one thousand that they're paying. Sure, it's about okay, a so, so you don't see time it. Great. You don't see it, but you are getting a credit. I got you. You know hmm. what I mean? Because right. them, I mean, I, your first policy worst. I don't even know what, what was the first policy you ever paid ten, eight years ago, seven, eight years ago. Probably about twenty-five hundred a year. So yeah. your insurance policy goes up over time with time and time and grade. Your revenue, insurance. revenue, payroll. The more work you, I have to explain that. This is how I explained Doc the first time I talked to him. So you build, you put one roof on a month. Okay, you make a thousand dollars so uh, per per month. So that's twelve 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 thousand dollars a year, right? The next year you put two roofs on a month. Well, now you're doubled your risk because you're doing twice the work. So you got more people on the roof more often. So now there's more of a risk. So each year you do more work, well, you get made, paid more money. So the insurance company is going to say, okay, you're doing more risk. We're going to make charge you more for coverage because we're taking more risk. Because if you, something happens to you, then the company is going to pay for that damage. And that's why that goes up. So what about, is, is a company not allowed to do some sort of safety certifications and say, hey, insurance, hey guys. I've done... All of these safety things to help reduce my risks. Yes. Is yes. there, is there, a, you know what I mean? Is there, is there something like that out there? It, it, it falls under better business. The carrier, if, when, as, if your agent explains that to the carrier, that's, that's kind of things we can do as far as um, helping with some credits and some money is we let them know, hey, they got, they got a training program. They do once a month and once a quarter. They have every OSHA standard covered. Um, and we let the carriers know that. And then they, that's why they get the rates you get. And it, it's like I said a minute ago, you you don't see that, but when if I showed you the six other carriers or six other roofing companies, you would know that you are getting a better rate. Sure. Yeah, man, there's so much involved with insurance in general. I mean, you know, house, health, life, the whole deal, man. Yeah. Our, our boy Jamie here has stepped up to the plate and is offering an outstanding service for any Alliance members that are a part of this. We've been scrolling his email address and his phone number across the bottom. Yeah. Um, I, I would highly recommend you guys, you know, just, just give him, give me your policy and let him look it over. He did mine and he was straightforward with me and told me my policy's cutting, cutting where it needs to be. So he, the man is not a pushy sales guy. He just wants to help. He's got, I'm, his heart. I'm not going to try to get a new policy for you. I'm not going to take this to the underwriters. All I'm going to do is look at them and see what kind of rates they are and see if what you can expect. Um, real quick, my website, my calendar link on there is acting up. So if you, if you have any questions or anything, shoot me an email. Um, try not to set a calendar appointment up because it's not working right. That's all right. That's all right. Well, Jamie, we appreciate you coming on, brother. We're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep it a little shorter this evening because it's uh, obviously Christmas Eve. We want to get get back to some some chat and some family time. But appreciate you coming on. Thanks for being a part of the alliance and, and just getting involved with us. As we all tell everybody that's a member, we're here to help where we can. Um, Doc, you got any save rounds, brother? No, just again, Jamie's a wealth of information. Shoot you straight, and um, and and that's cool. That's what we've come come to expect with the people in this group. Um, they understand our ideologies, and um, and we love that about them. We are so looking forward to 2021. And again, we weren't even planning on being on here tonight. But I was like, Yo, Jeff, let's just get on, say what's up to everybody, tell them welcome, Patriot Business Alliance. We're still going to be a part of the RVBA thing, but listen, we're what we're wanting to do is just take this whole camaraderie and just take it to a whole nother level. And we just want everybody out there to be a part of it and, and share it and participate in the so-called life and this dream that we're having. Yeah, the structured chaos, baby. I'm loving it. I am hey, guys, let me on here. Hey, Jamie, you be good. Merry Christmas, brother. Doc, Merry Christmas to you and your family. And uh, y'all be good. We'll have a good night. All right. Merry Christmas. Merry Peace. Christmas, y'all.